Good morning, true crime friends. It has been a great week for true crime. Oh my goodness, so many good things have happened. Okay, first of all, um, the Adelson crime family, that evil Charlie Adelson, he was convicted this week. Was that this week? Wait, today is Friday, November 10th, 2023. Um, I don't, it seems like it happened yesterday. It seems like it happened 500 years ago where we had like all that happiness because Charlie was going to prison and he was like, no. Um, and we were like, mm, honey, you going to prison and your mama's next and possibly your sister. I don't think your sister going to get arrested or convicted. Uh, maybe accessory after the fact. I mean, she's guilty, like guilty, guilty. She really did that. Um, but do they have the evidence on her? I don't know. Your mama though? Your mama going down. Oh, wait, I should say like and subscribe, right? I'm Kathy from Gossip Room Run Innuendo. Um, but look, so it was a great week in true crime. Charlie Adelson was convicted. We think, we suspect highly that his mama's going down next because his mama is trash. Now listen, not all mamas are trash, obviously. Most mamas don't help plan and finance a murder. But if your mama helps to plan and finance a murder, well then your mother is trash and I don't feel bad for saying it. Additionally, this week, Nestor Hernandez, that, look, I'm all news lady. Ooh, I love it when I go all news lady. He, this is the dude who shot up the maternity ward at Methodist, Dallas Methodist Hospital. Um, it, wait, Dallas, Me yeah, Dallas Methodist Hospital down there in Dallas, Texas. He got mad at his baby's mom and shot up the joint and threatened to kill her. Horrific story. A nurse was unalived. Um, a social worker was unalived. He was shot in the leg. You want to get real mad? You want to get real, real mad? Go watch his uh, defense attorney's closing arguments talking about how it was um, the baby's mom's fault. What? Are you out of your mind? Like, let me get this straight. You have some celebratory meth. You top that off with a beer. You late to the hospital. You're already angry. You go in there because you have a burning bush in your pants. And you're like, oh, you gave me something. Sir, maybe the meth gave you a UTI. Maybe you just was passing out your region to God knows who and that other person maybe you're just a terrible human being and karma showed up and was like boom and smited your region how you gonna blame this woman who just get I can't I cannot so if you wanna if you need to get your pressure up if your blood pressure is real low and you want to get it up you need to just like give yourself some energy go and watch that closing statement oh you be real mad you be big 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 mad because <clears throat> oh you know how to talk my throat dry hang on I am a high energy individual. I know this is shocking to you, but yes, it is currently, what time is it? I don't have my watch on. It's like four o'clock in the morning on the East Coast and I have this much energy and I have this much energy every day because I, it might not even be four yet. It might still be 3.30. Anyway, it's early and um, I'm a high energy individual, but I am slow to anger. Now, when you make me mad, you gonna need to stand back. But it takes me a long, I'm a slow burn. I have a lot of understanding, a lot of patience. But when we get to that point, you're not, you, you, that's not what you wanna do with your life. I'm just, just letting you know now, that's not what you wanna do with your life. So um, I was like, other, other trials where people just like lose their mind. This trial didn't make me angry. In fact, this trial made me say, huh, what is it about this individual? What happened in his life to make him think this was okay? Um, AKA, what made him trash? Because he's trash. He's homicidal trash and a terrible human being. And he not getting sent to prison. He's earned prison. He worked real, real hard to get LWAP. That's right. That boy's getting life without the possibility of parole. Now he has absolutely earned him and his face tattoos and his bad attitude and his everything else gone over there to the prison you gonna blend he said, i'm not going back why not them your people clearly clearly you belong in prison more than anybody i ever seen in my life bye nester we we not sorry to see you go not at all not at all additionally um the murdoch case now miss becky is out here with her statement her statement is mm -mm. That's legally, I mean, they use like a lot more pages to say that, but like, Miss Becky, did you tamper with the jury? Mm -mm. Like that, that is Miss Becky's official statement. Also, come to find out, child, 
Dick and Jim are shady, shady boots. Now, we knew that Dick Harpootley and, and Jim Griffin were shady boots, right? But we did not, uh, I personally did not appreciate the level of shade that these gentlemen brought to the situation. And this is why I say that. They're saying that some of the juries were tampered with. Jurors were tampered with. Okay, so show your work. Let me, let me see your paper. Let me see everything. So of the four jurors that they say were tampered with, Two of them never deliberated. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. How were you tampered and you didn't deliberate? Hmm? I don't, help me understand. Um, and then there was the egg juror who was dismissed. I think two of the jurors were alternates. And I'm like, okay, alternates, we see you trying to get your trip to New York in your 15 minutes of fame. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You're not going to be able to write no book. You're not going to retire off this. Yes, a lot of people made their money and came up and got podcasts and whatever about off this case. Okay, good for them, good for me, good for you. But here's the thing. You can't just be like, I was planning on writing a book and now I cannot. And so I'm going to file a lawsuit and maybe I will be on the court TV. No. What you're going to be is feeling terrible in your community because everybody's going to know who you are. Do I know who you are? No. Am I going to run into you at the Piggly Wiggly? Unlikely. But you know who is going to know who you are? All the people in the community, they're like, wait, is that Joe Schmo? What, weren't you part of that? So now you have to show your face in the community and everybody knows you're a jerk. Like, maybe you didn't mean to be a jerk or you an accidental jerk. I don't know. But now everybody knows you a jerk. It's not going to be a good look, especially if you're from a small town. Nah, boo-boo. You're going to have to move to a smaller town or a much, much bigger town so you can hide out because that whole case is a mess. But Mandy Matney's book is coming out next week. Blood on their hands. I'm so excited to read Mandy's book. I'm so excited to read Mandy's book. I have bought it in both Audible and Kindle formats. I hope she gets on the New York Times bestsellers list. Mandy Matney, I am chair. Look. I got my Mandy, my super Mandy cape lives right here on my chair. I am waiting with bated breath for um, Blood on Their Hands, Mandy Madney's new book to come out. I support women. Go Mandy. Super Mandy. Listen, cups up for Miss Mandy Madney. So I'm going to read that book. I'm also waiting for Attorney Soul Glow to write a book. That's right, Justin Bamberg. Justin. I know you be seeing what I say about you because you have reacted to some things I said about you. And yes, you are pretty. Yes, yes, I still think you are very pretty. Yes, I think your hair is too long and throws me back to a soul glow era. But apparently um, you enjoy your soul glow. So I'm gonna let you let your soul glow. That is fine. Um, I got my eye on you though. Some, some, mm, 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 mm. I don't trust a man that's that pretty and is that comfortable with guns. Now, do I think he's a bad guy? Nah. Justin Bamberg is clearly, clearly one of the good guys. Here's the problem with Justin Bamberg. Ooh, Justin loved himself a whole lot. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not for me. I love myself a pretty man. I married a pretty man. Had some pretty babies with a pretty man. But I'm like, I still got my eye on him. Like, okay. Although he does have a puppy. Ooh, I love puppies. Okay, so anyway. But he got guns and stuff. I don't, mm -mm, that's not for me. That. Everybody can do what they want to do, whatever, whatever. That's not for me. In other true crime news, Maya Kowalski. Now, y'all know I have not followed this Take Care of Maya case. Number one, it was too complicated. Number two, it was too sad. Number three, it went on for too long months. That's a long time. You know what I like? I like myself a three-day trial. In and out. You get in there, you get the information, you get the verdict, you go on with the rest of your life. And then that was a two-month trial. I was like, oh, that's too much trial for me. I like true crime, but that was too much true crime for me. That was a civil case. I don't know. And in the periphery evidence that I had, to me, it seemed like the mom was a little bit unstable and the hospital ab behaved abhorrently absolutely terribly but i was like i don't i don't know what's the right whatever on that one i was like i'm gonna trust the jury to get it right whatever that jury and judge says i'm gonna go with that well yesterday um maya won her case and was awarded a big giant pile of money hey my girl can i get along i i i need a um my, my private jet needs new tires i need a private jet i don't know anyway um maya and her family are gonna get a lot of money that's fantastic that's not gonna bring her mom back i just that part is heartbreaking because you need a good mother. Now, listen, if your mama's garbage, see also Donna Adelson, you don't need that in your life. But if your mama is good and this mother literally like went 
around the bend and took herself off this mortal coil because she was so upset at the treatment of her child. Now, I would have stayed and cut a bee on, you know, on this side of glory, but that's how I roll. But rest in peace. What was her name? Beata? Beata Kowalski? I think that was her name. Anyway, rest in peace, Beata. This money's not going to bring you back, but hopefully you just like a little angel floating around your cheerings and you still taking real good care of them. They're going to have a lot of money, which is nice. Money can, can soothe something. Child, you can grieve in Tahiti right now, but we know how this works. It's going to take years years and years and years for them to get this money. Maya's going to use this money maybe for her wedding if she's lucky, maybe for her children's wedding, but it's going to take a lot of years. Hopefully they'll, you know, they'll they'll tip her off a little something like, here's your first 10 million, we're going to fight about the rest of it. And then the lawyers will pad their pockets. Everybody going to get rich on this one. Good. But more than that, hopefully this hospital changes their bad behavior. And hopefully somebody starts a foundation of charity or something so all everybody involved can get some better mental help some of those people in that trial on the hospital side just seem pure evil but i don't i don't know names i don't know details that's just what i feel in my spirit some of them people was evil so look Lori and phillips is out here in these true crime streets she accidentally ran over her husband while she was drunk because they were having a fight was it an accident was it on purpose I don't know. I'm going to be over on the 13th juror today between my meeting for the, for the uninformed. And if you're here and you don't know what 13th juror is, you have not been paying attention because I spend my days over there on the 13th juror live stream. Me and Miss Brandy. Hey, Brandy girl. Watching her um, live stream when I can, when I'm not in meetings and calls and doing work related things. I have a big presentation today. Oh God. Okay. Anyway, um, when I'm not doing other things, I'm over there on the 13th year of live stream. Oh, child, I'm all up in the comments. Say, hey, if you see me, but don't distract from what Brandy's doing. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to disrupt the class. I just like, hey, how you doing? just give me a little finger wave. Just a little finger wave. And then get on back to focusing on Miss Brandy, because that's what we're there for. And the trial. We there, we don't want to disrupt the class. But um Miss Brandy is covering the trial of what's her name? Lori Ann Phillips, the state of I don't know what versus Lori Ann Phillips. Her and her husband went to a dive bar, got into a fight. He was abusive routinely. And then they went home and she accidentally unalived him with the truck. That seemed like an accident to me. That now that right there, that's an oopsie unaliving. Um, but they were both intoxicated, which I think sometimes starts up well, often starts off a lot of the like terrible situations happen when people over and by you want to drink drink have your drinks have a good time do whatever don't hurt nobody don't hurt yourself that i'm crazy those are my only rules don't hurt nobody don't hurt yourself and um these two routinely were like punching each other it was like rock'em sock'em robots over at their house okay i don't mm -mm. but um good for her she was trying to get out i think i think she was trying to get out of an abusive marriage i'm not sure but she accidentally ran him over when she was drunk in her truck that is my understanding of the case i'm gonna have to go back and watch opening statements um it's clear she ran him over with the truck now was that an accident was it an on purpose was it a he had it coming i don't i don't know i don't I think that's a defense though he had it coming i think that's a defense in the uh, the movie and the musical chicago but in real life i don't think you could do that your honor i plead he had it coming um that's probably not gonna go go for you so you should uh, shockingly i am not a lawyer please do not consult the gossip lady for your legal advice for your medical advice for your mental health advice now you need gossip advice oh child i'm your woman oh yeah mm-hmm you should call me first. You should get in my social medias because y'all, I, I don't be passing out my phone number like that. But um, get in my social medias and be like, girl, I ha I need gossip help. And then I can help you. But um, legal advice? Mm, maybe not. Last but certainly not least. It is Friday. It's high tea night. Look, pinkies up, ladies. Tonight, or gentlemen, whoever want to come, tonight we are doing a Zoom tea. Hi, tea. Yes, we're going to get together. And um, this is a members-only tea for those at the professional gossip level and above. So the link, the Zoom link for the tea is going to drop at 6.30 Eastern tonight. I already set it up. It's already scheduled. It's already going to drop tonight. Everything is ready to go. And listen, let me set the expectation. I'm expecting hats 
I'm expecting pinkies. I'm expecting some festive clothing, whatever. You're going to have to have your camera on. I am not expecting a massive crowd. I'm not. I want a, a couple of ladies to get together and have a little kiki and have a little tea with our pinkies up. That's all. That's all. Plain and simple. There will be door prizes. There will be gossip. There will be chitter, chatter about true crime. And we can talk to one another. That's why it's on Zoom. So we can talk. We can have a little chitty, chitty, chat, chat. Just us together. Listen. I got things to do this morning. I'm actually going to go to the supermarket before it gets crowded. The beauty of being up at some ungodly hour of the morning is that um, you go to the supermarket. Nobody bothers you. The downside of going to the supermarket at some godly hour of the morning is a whole bunch of boxes in the aisles. And you steering your cart around. But listen, I need the steps. I, I appreciate an obstacle course. No problem whatsoever. So I'm going to go. I'm going to get my groceries. And I'm going to do everything I need to do. Y'all... Get out there. You know, I've been encouraging this, and I, I think I'm going to encourage it again today. Do a random act of kindness anonymously. Don't put it on your social media. Don't tell nobody. You and your spirit will know that you did it. Get out there and do a random act of kindness. And also, don't commit no crimes. Have a great day. Bye.